So just when we think we about to have it all going on, Lawrence with Issa, Molly and Issa kind of kicking it and getting it back going on. Molly had to come along and fuck up the thing. But I actually think I'm all right with it. Want to talk about it? Here you go. Now, so girl, I know I'm two days behind with the insecure review. Bite me, bitch. Okay, I had the funky brunch on Sunday. Jack Daniels left all that liquor over here. I had took some of that liquor and went to a nigga house. And we stayed up all night and was drinking and, and hunching and carrying on. And I was hungover all day Monday and didn't start feeling better at 3 o'clock, okay? Y'all wanted some goddamn transparency. Over the weekend, I had an alcoholic problem. That is my truth and I'm standing in it, okay? I was drunk somewhere fucking. And so was Issa and Lawrence. Because the episode opens up, baby. Don't Issa and Lawrence give you a Whitley and Dwayne vibe from a different world? Just how you be rooting for them, they off again, on again. But they love is so sweet. Oh my God, it was just so nostalgic watching Issa and Lawrence in the opening sequence kicking it across different days and kicking it the way lovers do. We doing our work on the computer. We watching TV. We cuddling. We hunching it. We hitting it hard from the back. Sometimes we roll around to the front. They had it all going on and it felt really good. And then there was time to have the conversation. Da, 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 da. What are we doing? It isn't me, but doesn't that what are we doing conversation more times than not mess things up? And I'm definitely one of those shh, just go with it type of people. But after just going with it for so long, you do begin to need a level of definition to what is going on. And oftentimes that definition comes along with the title. And oftentimes that title comes along with all the other responsibilities that titles bring about. So Issa, in an effort to not fuck up the thing, she decides to tell Lawrence, you know, this weekend I got to go help my homeboy move. I was dating him at one point, you know, and I just, I just don't want to mess this up, whatever this is. And I think Lawrence respected it. I do think that Issa and Lawrence have reached a place of true truth in their relationship. And I think considering how Issa messed up in the past, and the fact that she was being this forthright and honest, I believe that Lawrence trusts that she won't do anything like that again to hurt him or hurt herself. And I honestly believe when she told him, and Lawrence was like, cool, that he really did mean cool. Because, I mean, look, let's face it, she didn't have to tell him. Then, of course, she asked him about Condola which we've all been wondering, and I know Issa been wondering why she was, you know, riding and getting beat down from the back on the sofa. Uh, you know, was he doing condola like this, or is he still condoling? Condola looked like she was too sophisticated, honey, to get done like that. Or, you know, Issa like it rough. Nevertheless, uh, I know she was wondering, was he still eating condola kitty box? And he was like, no, we had a conversation, and that's good and done. Um, Y'all yeah, was saying Condola was pregnant, and maybe that lady just wanted to talk. Um, then the scene flips to Molly being in therapy. There's a lot of parallels, and I've told y'all this before, between Issa and Molly, and about this one particular relationship in my life, or non-relationship anymore. But she was saying, 
Molly, Molly, there is a pattern. Somebody does something wrong, you build up a wall, you've done it, she runs a list of all these people tracking back to her dad. Then she asked a question that pierced me to my soul, which was, do you want to be in relationship or do you want to be right? And oftentimes when I get in conflict with people, I'm always the person who folds, right? And as strong as my opinions are, and as efficient and effective as I am at articulating myself, if it's somebody I love, I really don't care to fight. And if it's one of those subject matters where you're just not getting it, or it's too complicated for you to receive, or it's just causing too much turmoil between of us, between the two of us, I'm willing to just let the shit go because it means more to me to be in relationship with you. I love you than to be right on this particular situation. I'm, I'm one of those people. I can float very comfortably through this world, allowing you to think that you are right about whatever issue we had or allowing you to think that you won. It don't bother me. It don't bother me, A, because I know the true meaning of peace and it means more to me to have peace than to be in a steady state of combat with you. But also, too, sis, because I love you, I ain't finna let you go. I ain't finna let you go, so I'm not finna let this or me having to be right be the factor in which I end up letting this go. And I think she hit Molly with something because Molly has a very, it's my way or the highway. How I do it is the best way to do it. How I do it is the only way to do it. And I think that there was something eye-opening in that session for Molly. So Issa calls Kelly. Kelly asked on answer the phone. She calls her brother. He answers the phone and she wants to talk about Lawrence. Then we find out that, you know, she really wanted to talk to Molly about it. That was her go-to person with her conundrums. And they give us that flash forward scene where she calls Molly. Molly answers the phone and Molly ends up going off on her. And I was like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? But then again, it was like, you know what? There was old Issa leaning on Molly with your mess. And it's funny because me and a homegirl of mine, we fell out and we still didn't get 100% back on track. We fell out about her and her man, her no good ass man who she used to call me and talk about his ass and how she fed up with him, this and the third. And so one day I told her, you know, we was, we was most times I didn't chime in. This particular time I chimed in and was telling her how she could do better. Um, she must have went and told the nigga what I said the next day. She called me and texted me up, uh, backtracking and going off on me on text message about how she needed to stand by her man and she was wrong for talking about her man to me and I learned a very valuable lesson. Hey, don't sit down and discuss no bitch man with her. But yet, when we came back together about a year later, I had overheard from another mutual friend that this particular friend said, you know, she should have never talked to me about her man and moving forward, she just won't talk to me about her man no more in order for us to be friends. And I said, you know what, I actually appreciate her for that. Um, and I was like, I think that's the best thing for us to do. And with Issa and Molly, I do think that maybe because that is one area in which Molly judge Issa very strongly and it tends to shift the, the energy, focus, and dynamic of their relationship. Perhaps they can reconnect with Issa doing a better job of filtering certain aspects of her life to Molly until they grow to a place um, where they can handle that level of dialogue without all the other baggage and drama that comes along with it. Luckily that was a flash, flash forward and Issa just calls Molly and invites her to brunch. Um, Molly gets to the brunch challenge. She gets to acting all stank and standoffish. And you know, my blood was slowly starting to boil. It wasn't on high, it was on low medium at this point because we already know Molly's position is Issa needs to apologize to her first or whatever. As if she didn't show a complete, uh, show her whole ass down to that girl's event. And so she sits down and they start with the pleasantries. And you know, I'm one of those people too, in Molly's defense, let's not act like we didn't come here to talk about a specific issue. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the proverbial, hey. We're going to do the secondary, how you doing? Then we're going to do the final, how you been? 
And then it's, well, the reason I brought you here is because. And then we go into it. And after we either make up or break up, we can talk about all that other stuff. However, I'm not going to pretend like I've never been in that situation where me and a friend really needed to sit down and talk about something. But we got caught up in the fun of it all and how good it felt that you did not want to go back to the uncomfortable emotions and the thought, the uncomfortable thought of having to talk about something that was very nasty to happen between y'all. But we all know that that issue is still lingering and if they do not talk about it, it will rear its ugly head again as it did at the end of this episode. Um, the conversation was very superficial, but I like the fact that Issa reached out in her pocket and she paid for the brunch. That was a gesture of good faith. For me, that said, girl, I hear you. For me, that said, girl, I'm trying my hardest to not be the broke friend anymore. You've got a lot of brunches for me. Let me get this one. Um, it was a good move for Issa. So Molly goes to Andrew with her never satisfied ass. You know, having a complaining spirit and never being satisfied, that's just a nasty trait in some people. And Molly is just never satisfied. Nothing is ever enough. She can never see anybody else's efforts. And if their gesture is not in line with what she envisioned in her head, then it's wrong or it's something that she needs to complain about. Listen, 5 plus 5 equals 10, so does 6 plus 4, so does 2 plus 8. There is more than one way and one route to get to the same destination. Yet Molly seems to be hung up on if it doesn't look the way she wants it to look, then it's all wrong. Um, Andrew then brings up that his brother is in town, bought them some tickets for the game, and Molly was hesitant about going, and she was like, you know, maybe you should go just have a boys night out. Now drop down in the comments and let me know how do y'all feel about the situation because it ended up rearing its ugly head later on in the episode. I do think that, you know, I always said you can't do wrong to a motherfucker to tell them how mad to get. In this instance, I'm not really mad with Molly. I don't want to talk to your brother right now. And just because he bought a pair of tickets as a half-assed attempt of apologizing or extending the olive branch or sweeping it under the rug or whatever he want to do, I don't have to be ready to receive that right now. I got a lot of other stuff going on and I need more time to cool down. I don't see nothing wrong with her saying she didn't want to go to that basketball game and that he should go um, by himself or at her boys and I, However, I do get how that could have made Andrew uncomfortable uh, because that is his brother at the very end of the day. Um, Issa and that crazy ass assistant. I love the crazy assistant with the Eggo waffles in her purse. I love her. I love her. I love her. Um, Lawrence calls Issa to talk after Issa finished up with the assistants and says that the interview went very well. We already know where this is going. Lawrence ended up getting that job in San Francisco. I already feel it in my spirit and it's funny because Insecure would be wrapped up and tied up in a nice pretty bow that would be too nice if all the cards just fell in line for Issa and Lawrence to be together. We already know Lawrence got that job, but rightfully so. We also, in that very same scene, see that Issa is doing her thing and is on her way to her 30 minutes. She's finding her space in this big, crazy world, as we tend to do in our 30s. And this is just great for the both of them from a career perspective. Um... She brings up the fact that she talked to Molly and then Lawrence made a statement that drew parallels between both of them when he said, well, maybe she just needed some space in order to grow or, or needed some space in order to be together. And that was a direct parallel between those two. Maybe they just needed a little space to grow in order to be together. So I thought that Issa received it. It was cute. Um, Issa gets to Nathan's. When Issa got to Nathan's, this was the most cringe-worthy, like, four minutes of my life because it was just so uncomfortable. And it sucks because everything about Nathan's demeanor and his energy, 
I just love, like, Nathan is a cool-ass character, and I think him and Issa will have some cool-ass weed-smoking kids. However, I get what she's doing with Lawrence, and I respect her for being up front with, 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 with Nathan. But Issa get in there, you know, Nathan trying to, you know, do his little flirt thing, push up on her a little bit, and she acting all weird and flying across the room. I think the old messy Issa would have kept the mess going, but she was like, I've got integrity. I've got to, 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 to act right about this Lawrence situation, even when Lawrence is not present. And let me go ahead and tell Nate what it is. So she tells Nate what it is, and it broke Nate's heart a little bit. You could tell he was disappointed or whatever. And he started doing what niggas do when they get in their feelings. Start throwing out little remarks, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I thought you was over with that lame shit. Uh, I hope his ass act right this time. And Issa was like, bitch, don't mess with my man. You know what I'm saying? She, she wasn't feeling it. She was, that's how you know you love somebody. When somebody says something about your significant other and you get stressed in your chest, Issa was, wasn't having it. Finally, she was like, well, at least he communicates with his words and don't get missing. And then that's when Nate closes the cabinet and lets Issa know that he was struggling with mental illness. He, had, he was diagnosed bipolar and didn't know how to process it. And it was like, oh, fuck. I put my foot in my mouth, says Issa internally. And then they have a moment, though. They have a beautiful moment. So let me ask y'all this. Drop down in the comments and let me know. All things constant, do you think, considering their past and their connection, that Issa can be with Lawrence, but also remain friends with Nate and be trusted to hang out with him independent of Lawrence and it just be platonic? Um, God knows I would like them to because I think sometimes when God brings beautiful spirits in your life, like, you know, you need that. Um, but this also does consider the fact that they do have a connection, they vibe, and they have already crossed that line before. Um, down to the Coachella that y'all had to remind me about, that this could be a recipe for temptation and more so disaster. Um, Molly gets over to Andrew's house and brings the food, and they get to talking, and Andrew brings up the fact that, you know, I had to lie, um, and tell my brother you were working so you couldn't come to the game. And Molly was like, well, you know, I didn't ask you to do that. And I'm with Molly. I didn't ask you to do that. Molly was like, I ain't got no problems with your brother knowing I'm still mad with him and still ain't really featuring his ass. I ain't got no problem with it. That was your choice to lie. And they start talking about it, getting deep thought. Then Nathan and Issa walk through the door and break up the scene. And so, you know, Andrew prompts Molly to invite them over for dinner. And they stay and they eat and they start talking. And once again, Molly and Issa get caught up in the sauce of their old relationship. They're playing. It gets awkward. You know, should we stay longer? Should we pop a bottle? Should we play drinking games? You know, this feels good, but there's some, there's a, there's a, there's an elephant in the room or whatever. And Andrew goes to get another bottle and Molly fucks up the thing by texting Andrew, see, I'm really trying with her. And she makes a mistake and sends it to Issa. And Issa sees it and it hurts her feelings. Uh, I've done this before. I did it in a work email. I was talking about my boss. I was like, look at this shit she done sent me. But I made a mistake and sent it to her. And my boss politely wrote back, I don't think you meant to send this to me. And then we instantly had a fire drill at work and we all had to walk out the building together and stand by each other. We had like a, a, a big company wide meeting or something. And it was like awkward.com. And I'm just glad that I hadn't wrote in that particular email some of the things I had wrote in other ones. Um, nevertheless, I had got laid off from that job not too soon afterwards. I'm not saying the two are correlated, but I mean, hey. At any rate, Issa sees it. It's like, you know what, better yet, I'm going to go and she storms out. And then Molly comes behind her because, of course, Molly is, nobody wants to hurt anybody. And she's like, damn, I fucked up. And, you know, then, then Molly was like, girl, you know, don't, don't even act like we haven't talked, we, we, we ain't got to talk about this issue. And Issa was like, well, girl, you know, I wanted to talk, but you act like you didn't. And she's like, you know, 
I'm the only one trying here, Molly. You got to meet me halfway. And that is true because it feel like Molly wants somebody to grovel at her feet. And it's like, yeah, like, Molly, you cool. But being in a relationship with you comes, a lot, comes along with a lot of baggage as well. It ain't like it's just this supreme honor to be your damn friend. And, like, you just offer all these perks and benefits. So I'm with Issa. She's like, damn, Molly, I mean... I've been trying and trying and giving you. You're not giving anything. There's got to be some level of give on your part. And once again, that speaks to Molly's desire to want to be right. I'm so right, I can't give. Because if I give, that signifies that I'm not right. And then Molly said something that was very profound that I rock with. And she said, maybe who you've grown to be and who I've grown to be don't fit. And while that put a period at the end of that friendship, it brought me resolve. Um, because I think it's the truth. Iyana Van Zandt once said, if something doesn't work, why insist it does? This isn't working. Um, for some odd, undefinable reason, it's just not working. And what it will require in order for it to work is not who I am or who I'm willing to be. Thus, we need to stop trying to stick this square peg in a round hole and maybe let's just end on a high. And it was like, yeah. And I don't know about y'all if you've ever been in a situation like that where you come to that realization in, in a moment with a friend. And I'm speaking from personal experience. This has just recently happened to me within the last year. Um, a very long-lasting friendship. It, you know, it was one of those things where it was like, yeah. I, uh, we've reached our expiration date. Mm. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a. It's a loss, but it's also a relief at the same time. And it's one of those waiting to exhale moments when you can breathe. You're like, I get it. I see what this is. I understand, God. I understand, universe. I get it. There's no more rain in this cloud. I'm pressing on the upward way. Brand new heights I'm gaining every day. That's all I got, y'all. Ain't got no more. Y'all be sure to like and subscribe. I don't fuck around and got it in my bag. And I'll call y'all later. Bye.